Welcome everybody to the orientation to the alternate accelerated delivery program for surgical technology. Uh, the program is going to be administered by Glendale Career College. Uh, we are proud to say that we are the only alternate accelerated uh, delivery program. Um, and, and if you don't mind putting us on mute, everybody's experience will be better. The, this, uh, we are proud to say we are the only providers of this delivery pathway to certification for working professionals in the Western United States. Um, so there are a few programs back east, but we are proud to say this is, this is the only program in the Western United States that is accredited by ARCS TSA, the branch of KHEP that allows you to sit for the CST credentials. Moving forward, um, I'm going to go over a little bit of list of things that we'll be covering in today's orientation. Uh, we will be doing a few welcome and introductions and everybody will get to know each other. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the welcome email that you all have received uh, by now. We'll show how to log into Moodle, how to access your course in Moodle, how to navigate inside Moodle, which is our learning management system. Talk a little bit about how to access the student handbook. Please read it. Um, and be uh, knowledgeable about it. It contains very important uh, information about how you are graded in the course, how your attendance is uh, recorded, and how you can stay um, in good standing in the course and avoid uh, academic probation and or dismissal. So it's very important. And it's important for you to understand how to post to discussion forums in the online world we will, we will be working in a format that's called asynchronous sessions, which means you don't have to all be logged on at the same time to have an enriching classroom experience. So by posting to these discussion forums, you will be able to have classroom-like discussions with your instructors and your classmates. We will show you how to access your MindTap portal, which contains the, the contents of your AAD program and how to navigate inside of MindTap. And we will talk about weekly deadlines, graded versus non-graded activities, and how to maintain satisfactory academic progress in the course. Uh, we will also remind you what the attendance requirements are going to be and how to reach out to student services, your program director, and the director of online operations if you ever need assistance. If you can't reach one of them, all of them will be available to you via text and or phone and we will be back to you shortly. Texting works very well with us. All of our folks are able to text back and forth with our students with the information provided to you inside of your learning management system. Uh, having said uh, that brief agenda, let's talk a little bit about who's on our call. Why don't you uh, share your name, uh, uh, what department of Redlands Community Hospital you work in, and uh, how long you've been either a surgical tech or in a related field and we'll get a chance to know you and after the students have introduced themselves we'll introduce ourselves uh, the staff and faculty that will be supporting you throughout the program so who, who would like to go first go ahead and unmute us okay. and, and introduce yourself okay. um, Great. my name is Tiffany Pagani I've been a surgical tech or OB tech for almost um, 10 years and I work in labor and delivery <coughs> Excellent, excellent. Nice to meet you. Uh, who's next out there? I'm Ron Mitchell and I work in the OR for 15 years. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for uh, introducing yourself. Uh, how about the next person? Hi, I'm Corona. I work at Redlands since 2006. Excellent. Nice to meet you. And then, uh, let's see, that's three people. Is there anybody else out there who'd like to introduce themselves to their classmates? And to us. Amber Arsenal, I've been a OR tech for nine months now. Nice to meet you, Amber, and welcome to the field. Uh, I, I, I believe it or not, I, I am a graduate of Glendale Kirk College's surgical technology program myself. Uh, who's next out there? I've been in the past lab for about Seventeen years, maybe. Been at Redlands since '89. Excellent. Okay, and I heard a couple of people chime in at the same time. Who was trying to chime in? I'm Mr. Reynolds. 
Excellent. Well, nice to meet you all. Did I uh, did I leave anybody out? I know there are eight folks signed up for the course. I have seven so far. And I'm Caitlin, and I've been a physical therapist for 15 years in labor and delivery. Nice. Nice. Nice to meet you, uh, Caitlin. Thank you for chiming in. I think we have the whole class. Excellent. Well, the webinar will be there for your future reference in any case. We'll try to keep it short to about a half an hour's worth of content and then as much Q&A as you would like about the program you're about to embark in. Uh, so without further ado, I, I will introduce myself and, um, and what I do for, for the colleges. My name is Baylor Meza. I'm a graduate of Glendale Career College's Surgical Technology Program. Uh, way too long ago for me to date myself for you all. But I'm proud to say that, that, that surgical technology is still one of my favorite fields and exciting. And I'm currently the chief operating officer for all nine of our schools and colleges in Southern California and uh, Nevada. Uh, I'm going to introduce the, the person by name next, and they'll tell you uh, their title and what they do for the college. So, Vic, would you uh, like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Baylor. Hello, everybody. I'm Vic Sharma. I'm the Director of Online Operations, and uh, welcome to the AAD and uh, DCC World Cup Online, and I wish you much success. Thank you, Vic. Um, I know Art Bush is on the call. Art, would you mind uh, introducing yourself? Yes. Hi, everybody. My name is Art Bush. I'm a certified surgical technologist, and I am an instructor at the Glendale Career College campus where I teach uh, Term 3, which is the all-encompassing term in terms of surgical procedures. So that blends everything together. And I'm very excited to be your online instructor for your career here um, going through and forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Art. Um, and I think John White is on the call. John? Thank you, Baylor. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is John White. I think I've met most of you guys. I am the uh, program director of Glendale, uh, excuse me, of Northwest College's uh, Riverside Campus. I'm also a certified surgical technologist and a proud graduate of Glendale Riverside College. Much like Baylor, way back to long ago to date myself. I'm very, very proud and eager to have you guys join us on our AAD program. And good luck. And uh, let's get moving. Thank you, Baylor. Excellent. Did I miss any team members from uh, Success Education Colleges, either at the Northwest Colleges or Glenda Kerr College? Hearing none, excellent. I will, uh, I will go ahead and continue. Um, I'll talk a little bit about a welcome email. Um, have any of you checked your inboxes within the last couple of hours and found an, a welcome to Glenda Kerr College online email? Excellent. Okay, so that welcome email has your login credentials to Moodle, um, and um, you know you'll you'll use that to access your learning management system. Uh, your email has been loaded to Moodle so that you can also receive a forgot my password email. So it's very important to double check once you log in your profiles. I will show you how to do that in a minute so that your email is accurate because that way if you ever forget your password you won't need any of us or worry about us being off hours and not being able to get to you for you to finish your work um, so it's always important to update your your email so that if you click on the forgot my password our learning management system Moodle will automatically email you a new uh, password reset okay so but for now that email will show you uh, will will give you the URL or website address to click on um, and then your login username and your login password. So for now, we're going to, on the screen, navigate over to our learning management system site. I wanted to let everybody know that you won't be logging in through the glendalecareer.com website, which is our main school website. Uh, you will be logging into our Moodle website, which is moodle.glendalecareer.com, as you can see there moodle.glendalecareer.com Any questions about the website that you'll be navigating to? No. 
Great. Hearing none, we'll go ahead and get over to our Moodle website. You'll know that you're at the right website because uh, you'll see this home page. While this picture in the middle that says GCC on it may change from time to time to keep our uh, website a little bit refreshed, um, uh, make sure that you are at the appropriate URL. The rest of the things that you see here on the screen won't change. You also have a handout that was attached to your email, your welcome email, that shows you step by step how to log in if you are not uh, able to get to this webcast or aren't following the, the um, you know, having trouble logging in. Um, it's it's noteworthy to say that you uh, are going to have to go to this top right hand corner to click on the log in link. It's it's not as conspicuous as we, as we would like, but we didn't design the software, but you would have to go to the top right hand corner and click on login. Once you've clicked on the top right hand corner and you're logged in, and you, and you will get to the login screen, you will type your username and your password, and you'll click on log in. If you ever forget your password, um, you can just click on forgotten you, your username or password. <clears throat> and if your email address is correct in the system in your profile, uh, which we've load them, um, loaded them up as we have them, but if it ever changes, keep it, keep it current because then you will just use this link to get yourself a new password or your username. Any questions there? No. Great. Hearing none, we're going to go ahead and log in to the learning management system. And you are going to, um, I'm going to make sure that I log in as a student um, so that you can see me as a student um, in a little bit. Once you're logged into the home screen, you will need to uh, proceed to the My Courses link on the left-hand side of the page and select the STAAD Redlands Community Hospital Cohort link. And then you will be taken to, to the Classroom web page. Okay? I will go ahead and repeat that uh, by going to the home page. I'm switching my role to student so that my screen looks as much like yours as possible. So notice I'm now playing the role of a student. So when you go to home, once again, after you've logged in, you'll be on the home page. Okay. And then you'll click on My Courses to access the STAAD RCH cohort classroom. And you'll be taken to your classroom page. Okay. Any questions on that portion so far? Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, please note that uh, if you ever get stuck, feel free to call or text us to these numbers that you see here. This, uh, the numbers to your instructor, to student services, and to your director of online operations all work via phone or text. So if you're ever trying to get a hold of us, even after hours, as long as we're near our phones, we're, we're here to help our online students. Your Surgical Technology Program Director, Mati Maya's phone number for the campus is here. Uh, we do not have a phone or text number. And you may uh, need to call upon her the least. Um, in this order, questions should be directed to your instructor, Art Bush, Student Services, Alma Meza and to your Director of Online Operations, Vic Sharma. <clears throat> they will be much more uh, apt to help you with your online coursework than your program director. Any questions? No. Excellent. Your program director can answer questions about the certification process, uh, if you have some questions about the program in general, However, she's not as involved in the online delivery uh, as the folks that I've just pointed out. Okay, hearing uh, no questions about that, let's talk a little bit about your learning management system and how to navigate inside of Moodle. Moodle is one of the most powerful and widely used learning management systems in the world. Uh, locally, a lot of high schools use it. Uh, and many school districts use it. 
uh, kids in high school are already using learning management systems. And Cal State LA is a big university that uses it. Many other Cal States are on this. And many, many universities and colleges around the world use Moodle. Moodle is, is easy to navigate around. And if you'll notice, these rectangles that are shaded um, are called the blocks in Moodle. The top block on the left-hand corner is your navigation block. The thin rectangle underneath the Glendale Career College logo is known as your, your navigation, navigation, um, bar, navigation bar. So you'll always have the navigation bar on top to get back home or to get to your course. And inside of, of your screen in Moodle, the navigation block adapts to the type, the, part of Moodle that you are in. Uh, the administration block allows you to take a look at such things as grades. Uh, you will not be allowed to look at the question bank, um, but um, because I'm an administrator it shows that to me. But you will be able to look at your grades by going to the administration block. Okay. You will also be able to use the people block and look at the participants in your course, which is basically your classmates. Notice I left my program page and in order to get back to it, because I'm in the participants page, all I need to do is, is use my navigation bar and go back to the STAAD RCH cohort. If I ever get lost, I can always go back home and start over again by selecting my courses and getting into the into the course home screen. Any questions so far? No. Excellent. Okay, um, every so often you will want to be able to um, access your your um, program handbook. You don't have to print it out if you don't want to. Uh, we try to be as green as possible with our online course delivery. So you have a PDF file that will work on your phone or work on a laptop or tablet device. And it contains all the relevant information that will help you be successful in your program, including uh, our policies regarding discussion boards and classroom participation. Our due process, appeals, the attendance policy is listed on what consists of attendance. It's very important to note that if you do not participate for 14 consecutive days, you are, you are making yourself subject to withdrawal from the college. Uh, you should always reach out to us because we always have mitigating circumstances. Life gets in the way. So don't just assume you're going to be dropped. We want to help you finish what you start. But please note that we do have a strict attendance policy in online. Um, you will not be able to make up any uh, graded activities or quizzes once the weekly deadlines have come and gone. You will, you will earn the points that you've earned and then you'll move on to the next week. You must maintain a minimum of 70% academic average in your week-to-week -week progression and in your four-week blocks where we will um, analyze your grades and check your academic progress and in your final grades for your courses that will show on your transcript. Um, we will evaluate your academic progress every four weeks. We will look to make sure that you have a 70% average during that four-week period. Should you fail to achieve a 70% average, we will give you a four-week probationary period. And in that four-week probationary period, we will expect that your GPA come back up above four, uh, up above 70% just for that four week period, and then you will be taken off probation. Should you fail to achieve 70% in the, in that probationary four week period, you're also making yourself subject to dismissal from the program. We want to support you in helping you finish. So we will be reaching out to you uh, every week during a probationary period should that ever happen. Um, and don't take it for granted. There, Even if you need tutoring, 
via distance, via webinar like this. Uh, we were, we're, we'll be there for you and be glad to provide you office hours with your instructor. Um, there's information about the AST, which is the Association of Surgical Technologists, the trade association for our profession, and uh, CST examination info. And, of course, you will be required to not pass, but you will be required to take a mock CST examination that is through our learning management system that mimics the real thing. Uh, and at, after that, and based on discussions with uh, your instructor, you will be advised as whether or not you're ready to sit for the CST examination. It's advisable that you do not sit for that exam until you are ready. Examinations are done at multiple testing centers throughout the United States. Uh, there can be one near you, or you can also schedule to join one of the examinations at one of our campuses nearest you, where we have surgical technology programs. And you can reach out to your instructor for those arrangements when the time comes. Any questions on our student handbook and just a quick overview of the most important policies and procedures? Excellent. Okay, um, and remember, because this is an academic program, you know, it's instructor-led, there are grades, there will be a transcript, there is a, a diploma, um, because ultimately uh, we are an accredited college. The program is programmatically accredited and approved by KHEP and ARC-STSA, and that is what makes you eligible to sit for certification. Um, moving along, let's talk a little bit about discussion forums and how to interact with your instructor. To access the discussion forum for your classroom, you will click on the discussion forum link. And then there will be different topics uh, for your discussion forum. For example, right here, Art has created an Ask Your Instructor forum. This is general Q&A, whether there are questions about your classroom or questions about Hey, what do we do if we can't log in next week? Um, and so there's a general Q&A forum there for you. There's a welcome and introductions. We hope to, to hear a little bit more about you um, so that you can introduce yourself to your instructor. And when you log in as a student, you will be able to reply to uh, the discussion forums. I'm not allowed because I'm in as a system manager right now. And once you get to a discussion post page, there will be a box where you post your, your, your comments. And you click post to forum, and then you've completed that required um, activity. Okay. Welcome back, viewer number 13. Okay, any questions on discussion forum so far? Great. Great, great, great. This, this group is great. It's going great. Um, I know we have many bright and uh, intelligent surgical technology professionals here, so we're moving right along here. Um, the Cengage MindTap portal for your cohort is where your coursework lives and how your instructor will be able to see the progress of your course and how you will be able to access all of your required course activities. On a weekly basis, you will just see the weekly, uh, the week to week breakdown. Uh, there, there will be the same disclaimer all week long. Uh, you have from, uh, Monday 12 a.m., which is basically midnight, Sunday night. So Monday 12 a.m. till Sunday 11.59 to complete all required coursework. Okay. To access your required coursework, simply click on the Cengage MindTap portal link above. And we're going to do just that. The MindTap portal takes a few seconds to load up while it ensures that you are enrolled in one of our class, in, in our Moodle and that you do have permissions to access the course content for your instructor. And we'll wait a few seconds while that loads up. 
the first time that you log in, you're likely to see a screen that says Surgical Technology Alternate Accelerated Delivery, GCC Redlands. Your classroom meets Mondays from 12.01 a.m. through Sunday, it should say 11.59. We'll correct that for you all. Um, and you will be directed to the weekly view. And in the weekly view, you will see your required activities for the week. And we'll go through them a little bit. Something that is noteworthy here is, is you see these orange icons next to a percentage bar. Those are the graded activities for the week. These are the activities that will give you points that will help you achieve that 70% GPA for the week. So make sure you complete all of your graded activities. It is recommended that you progress through your graded activities in the order that you see them here on the screen. But you don't have to, it is just highly recommended. You can choose to leave your graded activities till the end of the week while you do all the nine graded activities. The way your course is set up is that the non-graded activities will give you all of the content that you need to study, know, and learn prior to engaging in the weekend graded activities. Any questions on that part of the orientation so far? On the graded activities versus non-graded? Excellent. So what will you see? The chapter one case studies um, or any other chapter case study that appears at the beginning does not require you to read the chapter before you answer. As you choose an activity, if you notice, you'll start the assignment. Once inside of an activity that's graded, on your left there will always be question numbers depending on the number of items that you need to complete in that area. In this case, for example, the chapter one case study, you will have five different questions to complete, as you see there. Uh, once you post, uh, once you post the questions, uh, once you post your answers to the question, you can save and move on to the next question. I'll repeat that again. Once you post the answer to your question, you can save and move on to the next question. Once you have completed and reviewed your work, you can submit the assignment for grading. The system will warn you that you are submitting the assignment for grading. So you can either go back and review it or continue it because you noticed you didn't finish something. And for example, here these dots say at least I viewed these items. Number three, I have not even viewed. Or you're ready to submit for grading. Any questions on that? Excellent. We'll close out of that window. Whenever you see uh, the chapter number and the name of the chapter, that will be your book. So your entire textbook is located and is accessible here. If you ever want to go to the contents of the chapter you're reading, just click on chapter contents as I did, and you'll be taken back to the contents of the chapter in your book. This will sync to the last place you were reading. You can also navigate to different aspects of the chapter by using the chapter contents links. You can progress through the pages of the chapter by clicking on the arrows to the left and to the right of your screen. And if you come across an area of the book that you want to see enlarged, if you see a plus sign, you can click on that and it will enlarge the view. Here we have enlarged the view of the history of surgery. 
I will collapse that. If you notice, I can go forward pages and I can go backward pages. I can also highlight um, different areas of my book. I can print certain uh, pages if I wanted to. And that is how to navigate your textbook. I'm going to close out of the window once again. Wherever you see the title, chapter number plus the title of the chapter, that is your textbook. So if we're continuing the flow and we've looked at the case study and we've, we've looked at our chapter objectives, which will always appear in what you will learn, um, we can also start studying for our graded activities below. After we've read the chapter, we can study some key terms. And, um, you know, it's fair warning that, that uh, you'll, you'll see quite a few of the key terms inside of your quizzes. If you want to look at the definition of your key terms as you're studying, click on the key term and you will get the definition. You click on the key term and you will get the definition. If you, after you've studied your, your key terms, a fun way of reviewing is playing a, a memory game with your key terms and visiting our flashcards. In order to, to navigate our flashcards, what you need to do is you look at the flashcard and you can flip it or you can do the next card and by clicking inside the flashcard you can flip it next card flip it you can do the previous card or you can reshuffle the deck you can also create your own flashcards any questions about the flashcard system excellent moving forward um, you will have an opportunity to review what you've learned in the non-graded activities to this point by doing an end of chapter review which is kind of the the cliff notes this is a case study for end of chapter sorry let's look at the end of chapter review which is kind of like the cliff notes I say that with a lot of trepidation because these tests do require that you read and know your chapters but you can um, review what you've learned by using these PowerPoint presentations that have been loaded up for you after you've utilized and systematically completed your non graded activities uh, then it's advisable for you to complete your, your end of chapter case study and the quizzes. There's a fill in the blank quiz, multiple choice, and true and false quiz. And then there's a brief certification style quiz that allows you to prepare for certification style questions as you progress through your course. To the right hand side, there is a bar that I can turn on or turn off in your MindTap portal. And in that bar are many tools. You can search for things like inside your chapter or in any of the tools. You can access your full textbook here, not just the contents of that week. Should you choose to read on or utilize other chapters for your homework, you can access the full textbook. You can uh, use the glossary of the textbook to study, you will be able to access your progress bar. And um, although as an instructor, we're able to see the progress of everybody who's enrolled in the course, for example, here are some folks, um, you know, you will be able to see your own progress as an overview. It'll tell you the percentage of things that you've done. It'll give you analytics, you know, how much you're logging on, and how much time you're spending, and um, you'll be able to see your grade book and you'll see your uh, you won't be able to categorize activities because that is a managerial function 
Um, so those are the most important aspects of your portal, your learning portal. It will default to the weekly view. You can use the unit view as well to flow through the activities. And you can use the list view as well. The list view will show you the, the due dates for each of the activities. To scroll ahead and see what's coming ahead, if you want to get ahead and read ahead using the full textbook, you can scroll ahead of your weeks by pressing the arrows left or right on the middle of your screen. Notice that the future weeks will not allow you to access the content. Um, it will allow me to access the content because I'm an administrator, but as a student, though the content will not be open for you unless you um, are in the appropriate week. Once you have completed that week, you have earned the points that you have learned, earned, those will be recorded to your grade point average, so the deadlines must be met. The content will no longer be available for points if you are past your deadline. Uh, let's recall that satisfactory academic progress means achieving 70% of your points on any given week and you keep that 70% average, you'll be able to successfully complete the program. Uh, you are required to complete at least two graded activities per week in order to have attendance that counts that week. That only gets you attendance for that week so that you are you remain in good standing. However, I don't recommend leave, leaving any points on the table on any given week so that you can maximize your GPA. Should you uh, want to get a hold of us, um, you can notice I'm in a different web browser window. I can always go back to Moodle or back to your MindTap portal. And again, Moodle's our learning management system. You, you can only access your MindTap portal through Moodle. But both windows will be open at the same time. You may want to have the MindTap portal open, and you may want to be inside of a chapter, for example, to answer some of the discussion board questions posted by your instructor as assignments. Um, that is basically how the system operates. All of our contact information is here for your instructor, Art Bush, for our student services advisor, Alma Meza, and for your director of online operations, Vic Sharma. And again, texting is very uh, helpful when you are after hours. Um, it's sometimes a lot easier for our folks to answer texts rather than giving you a call back. Um, I hope that you have found this uh, orientation session helpful. Um, I, I will now be pleased to open it up to any questions you might have about the program that we may not have covered today. Okay, do I still have everybody? You will be putting in about 16 hours of study time, which is comparable to uh, an on, you know, an on-ground surgical technology program, except you're doing it in the online space. Um, and after that 16 hours of study time, you'll be prepared to answer the graded activities for points. All in, you'll probably be spending anywhere between 16 to 20 hours a week to complete the activities and to maintain. Um, a good standing with the college academically. But that was a great, a great question. Of, sorry, is there a requirement of how much time we have to spend actually logged in on the program per week? That is an excellent question as well. Um, no, we are engaging in, a, in an asynchronous learning model for our online programs at Glendale Career College Online, which means there's no minimum amount of time you need to log in. There won't be a maximum. You just pretty much have to be done with your work anytime between Monday at 12 midnight 
and Sunday at 11.59 p.m. So you have seven days, every minute of every hour of seven days to complete the work, uh, however you can get it done. What are those programs, um, what are we supposed to be uh, completed? Excellent. Uh, that is a variable answer. Uh, some of you have submitted transcripts for evaluation for the anatomy and physiology and basic sciences component. Uh, we have decided to start the cohort together. We felt it would be better. We'd, get, we'd have a bigger group and more camaraderie and richer discussions. So we will be uh, flowing through the core subject matter for those for the entire group. And for those that do require anatomy and physiology and any other basic science components, which is about nine weeks of the program, um, you, you will pick it up at the tail end. The program does incorporate required anatomy and physiology for surgical pathophysiology that you will need for the surgical procedures portions of the program. For example, you need to kind of know the, the, anat the surgical anatomy of the groin to answer questions about a hernia. Um, the entire program without the anatomy and physiology component is scheduled to complete in mid-February. Correct, Vic? Uh, yes, that's absolutely correct. Your academic portion completes uh, after the first week of February, and then the last week you will be taking your mock CST exam so that we can provide you with academic advisement as to the timing of your CST examination. So that was an excellent question. Will there be homework assignments on the discussion forum as well, or will all like things that are do and grade is going to be in the mind Excellent question. You will have a required participation in the discussion forums in Moodle. Uh, there won't be any discussion forums in MindTap. So your required discussion forum activity will take place in Moodle and it will be counted as part of your participation grade. Okay. That's a great question as well. Any other questions I could answer for the group out there? Hearing none, uh, we'll be getting ready to, uh, to conclude this session. Um, I hope that you have found this orientation useful um, and, and allows you to put your best foot forward. You all have, um, you all have access to the portal now. Um, your content will be live as of Monday the 20th. Uh, so, you know, if you can't get into content over this weekend, don't fret. Uh, we do require for all of our online programs so that we know who's actually going to start um, to post at least to the discussion forums by end of day Monday, by midnight on Monday. If, if, if it's just a welcome, an introductions post that tells us a little bit more about yourself, or it's a question to your instructor, or you just want to post on the general forum, the general Q&A forum and say, hi, this is my post. Uh, I, I'm confirming I'm starting the program today. Um, that allows us to solidify your seat in the class and confirm that you are part of this cohort. So that's very important. It doesn't have to be long. We'll just take 10 minutes of your day. We know that you're working professionals and that you may plan your week around, uh, you know, different dates. The only required login time, I guess, that we will be asking of you is on day one of your programs, and that is just a post to tell us that you're an active participant in the program. Any questions on that? Okay, uh, hearing none, we, we thank you for um, participating in this program. We're very excited to offer this program gratis to the Redlands Community Hospital community. Uh, I want to thank her, even though she's not here, I want to thank Laura Andrews for bringing to our attention that this is one thing that she could offer to Redlands Community Hospital team members uh, and hopefully bring some added value to you and to your careers. And we're happy to do this for a uh, clinical partner like Redlands. 
Uh, this program costs $10,000 to the public, and we're, we're proud to offer it to you gratis um, in, in, um, in appreciation of what you all do to help our students. Okay, now before we close, I'd like to, um, to turn it over to your instructor for some important closing words about um, <clears throat> being a working professional in surgical technology and kind of um, your work experience as it relates to your success academically. Um, so Art, uh, uh, if you can hear me, please unmute the phone and take it away. Yeah, hi. Uh, again, everybody, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Art Bush again, and it's spelled like the beer, B-U-S-C-H. I'm going to be your online instructor in this virtual world for the next few months. Um, the goal of this uh, surgical technology AAD program, again, is to prepare you and make you eligible to sit for the CST exam. And that's administered by the NBSTSA, which is a big, long acronym that you will be looking up if you don't know what it is already. The content of the course will be based upon AST recommendations for standards of practice for the surgical technology profession. Now, while your work experience is invaluable to your careers, it's very important to remember that all of your exams and homework will be graded based upon the information you receive in the course and the AST textbook, Surgical Technology, for the surgical technologists. Therefore, it's important that you study, need, and understand and put in the required 20 hours of study time per week prior to taking your quizzes and your exams. Answering, well, this is very, very important. Answering based upon the work experience that you already have is going to hurt you. It's going to hinder your ability to achieve passing scores on your assigned work. And let me explain why. Because the book learning is what the tests are based on. Your experience may conflict with what's actually in the book. So we call it real world experience versus your cognitive learning experience from the books. So you got to put that idea out of your head. Your mind, your mindset has to be that you're learning this information as if you don't have any experience, so to speak, from the book. Because it will trip you up if you just go by what you guys have been doing in the hospitals. Any questions about that? No. Okay, no. because that's a, it's a very important distinction. So uh, that being said, I wish you all the best of luck, and I'm going to be here to support you. Text me. Um, I'm going to get into the discussion forums with you, and uh, I'm going to put questions up. And I want everybody to be proactive in this so we can have some fun with it, okay? Well, thank you so much for joining, and thank you for those comments, Art. Uh, Laura Andrews is very um, um, adamant that we make that distinction and and give everybody that disclaimer. And as a result of her feedback, and as you can see on your screens, if you're looking, uh, we actually added it to our program handbook because we felt that was a very important thing, uh, piece of advice for folks, and uh, we we thank her for it. Uh, if you see her, uh, please thank her for us, and um, and she will also be uh, able to take a peek at your progress in the course as she's requested to be a non-editing instructor mm -hmm. in both the Moodle course and the MindTap progress. Uh, so um, I once again wish you the best of luck, mm -hmm. and thank you for participating today. Uh, let your classmates know if they missed it. Um, we will have this webinar available. Just let us know. We'll provide a link so that they can view it. Um, last chance to answer any questions that might be out there. Great. And if you were too shy to ask, go ahead, go ahead. Did I miss a question? No, I just thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, 
Uh, you're welcome. And and if you are too shy to ask a question in a group, that happens as well, even in the online world. Uh, don't forget that you can message your instructor uh, individually. It doesn't have to be through the uh, instructor forum. You can send them a text message. You can send them a Moodle message. Um, and or you can email uh, any of the folks your questions. Uh, to message your instructor, simply click on Participants. Uh, find your instructor in the course and click on message and then you can type a message to Art Bush click on send message and he will get a Moodle message uh, and it'll be just between you and your instructor um, so that that uh, concludes this everybody I hope you have a, a pleasant weekend coming up uh, this summer and that uh, we don't cramp your style too much. Uh, we try to make the program as focused as possible to get you on your way to certification. And uh, once again, thank you. That concludes our session, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Bailey. Bye. Bye.